Hello. How are you? Thank you for joining me. I suck at history. In fact, I think I'm going to title this something like American Who Sucks at History Reacts to World War I. Because growing up, history was just, I just couldn't pay attention. I don't know why. I thought it was the most boring class in the world. It was like at the time I didn't realize that this is all true and therefore that makes it extremely fascinating to see how this world we all lived in unfolded and came to be where we're at today. Now I find it fascinating, but I have a huge lack of knowledge when it comes to World War I. So I'm very interested to watch this video. I'm sure I'm going to seem like a total moron and be like, oh my god, I didn't know that. Germany did that? But I feel like it's a really important precursor to World War II, which I know more about, more about than World War I. Um, so I'm just interested. And th these, this guy's videos are always great. Oversimplified. Go check him out. Link down below. I'll definitely be watching part two as well. But let's start with part one, let's do it. The world of 1914, a time of modern technology, culture, and fashion. Truly, I guess any time in history is a time of modern technology. The height of civilization. Let's have a war. Everyone knew a big <laughs> war was coming. France wanted some stuff back that Germany had taken from it. Here's my first stupid question. How did everybody know what everybody else wanted without the internet? Huh? How did we all talk to each other? How did we have any idea what a any other country was wanting? Couldn't look at their Twitter. Germany wanted to take more of everyone's stuff, and they were building a big sexy nation. I'm sorry, what did... Let's have a war. Everyone knew a big war was coming. France wanted some stuff back that Germany had taken from... <laughs> It feels so petty. I mean, who am I to say? But it's like such a, a sliver of land. They're like, we want, we're going to need that back. <laughs> we're going to have to kill a lot of people to get it back. It. Germany worth wanted it. to take more of everyone's stuff. <laughs> and they were building a big sexy navy that was making the British uncomfortable. <laughs> These two empires thought they were really cool. But lots of different people. Oh, hold on. Guys, I've returned. I had to go on a mission to capture this praying mantis. Can you see him in there? I mean, he's huge. Um, do you guys have these? Are these native only to North America? <laughs> it's the coolest bug. Uh, they're like endangered or something, so we gotta keep this guy alive. Hopefully he's not suffocating. Here, I'll give him a little air. There you go, buddy. A little fresh oxygen. Um, I'd show him closer, but my camera doesn't autofocus right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go let him out and then continue the video. Okay, hold on. All right, back to World War I. The little guy has been set free, rest assured. Whew. Let's lock back in. People who live in the British are uncomfortable. These okay. two empires thought they were really cool, but lots of different people who lived there didn't think it was so cool. And oh. some of them had even been declaring independence with help from Russia. Everyone was talking about each other behind each other's backs. <laughs> the fact that On what? Where was Twitter? Military technology had come a long way since the last major war, and suddenly everyone was pretty eager to beat each other up. In this area of Austria-Hungary lived some Serbs and Bosnians who hated living in Austria-Hungary. So the Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand goes there yes. for a nice drive in an open-top car. You know, I mean, I know, okay. Let me just say, I know the shot heard around the world. You know, of course, Franz. Franz, old Franz. Killed by some young guy. With his car's route published How crazy is that? And that went just about as well as you'd expect. Some assassins were waiting for him along the way and threw bombs at his car. I didn't know they threw bombs. But they missed and blew up some officers behind him instead. So the Archduke goes into hiding, leaves Sarajevo, and the whole war never happens. Except no, the Archduke doesn't leave, but instead goes back out in the open top car to visit Why? the injured officers in hospital. The you know, I don't know anything about this Archduke guy, but he seems like a stand-up guy. I mean, that's pretty badass. You get a bomb thrown at you, and it it hits the guys behind you, and you go visit them in the Wow. Driver takes a wrong turn and by He's probably an asshole. I don't know anything else about him, but your coincidence gets stuck beside one of the failed assassins. Oh shit. He shoots him. 
Austria Hungary is is, the shot. about all this, and they think the Serbian government had something to do with it, which they might have. So they go oh, to really? ally Germany and say, Hey Germany, we're gonna declare war in Serbia, and Germany is all for that. So Austria Hungary <laughs> send a big list of impossible demands to Serbia, and when Serbia refuses, they declare war. <laughs> Austria, Hungary, and Germany are... So is the big list basically a formality? It's like, well, we got it. We can't just... We can't just start fighting them. We got to at least start an argument first. Friends. And Serbia is protected by Russia, who's friends with France. So they'll declare war on each other. Oh, damn. Montenegro joins in too. France and Britain also have a kind of alliance. So when France says, hey, Britain, you got my back? Britain is like, maybe oh my god and then they decide to stay out of it which is great for germany because germany has a plan oh, they shit. know that russia is so big and clumsy that it will take them a while because to- they could have used britain's n- navy huh especially he said germany's navy is huge at this germany, point because germany has a plan they know that russia is so big and clumsy that it will take them a while to get ready for war so with this guy in charge Germany will send all its troops into France at lightning speed while Russia's getting ready. Blitzkrieg? Defeat France, then move all the troops to Russia and defeat Russia, and then we also... <laughs> is that... Is that Blitzkrieg? Speak German. Maybe not. Pfeffer podcast every day. Just one problem. <laughs> France has loads of forts and defenses along its German border. Oh, shit. And Germany can't waste any time fighting them, so Germany decides to go around them. Through Belgium. Oh, no. Belgium is neutral, but Germany wants to march 750,000 troops through it to get around France's defenses. They're hoping Belgium will just kind of sit down and shut up, but they don't. They fight back, and they're pretty good too, so they slow the Germans down. What's worse is that Britain shows up, and they're pretty pissed that Germany's invading neutral countries. So now Britain declares war in Germany. So Germany mm. pushes on through Belgium and commits some atrocities. So that was kind of maybe a mistake by Germany there. I'm just saying, Belgium, leave them out of it and maybe... Britain stays out of it, maybe? Question mark? I don't know. These along the way. They also wear spikes and sometimes skulls on the uniform. So if you're trying to not... Are we the baddies? ...not look like the bad guys, good job. The Allies have a propaganda extravaganza, and this starts having an influence around the world, notably in America. <sighs> okay, I need to look at some of these posters. Sorry. The, the, I'm not even going to say that word. I don't think YouTube likes it when you say that word. Whoa, dude. A day-by-day day record of the Germans... Uh, drive through Belgium. A narrative of fact, dramatic, thrilling, true. Start reading it today. Interesting how they put a dash between two day. Oh, damn. Let's have a propaganda extravaganza. Oh, my gosh. And this starts having an influence. Oh, shoot. It's around the world, notably in America. The U.S. President Woodrow Wilson sees himself as a bit of a Jesus figure and spends most of the war trying to get everyone to just hug it out. But there's also a large population of ethnic Germans living in the United States, and when the war first broke out, they were like, yay, Germany. But now that they're committing atrocities in Belgium, they're less enthusiastic. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry, guys. There's a lot of Germans here in Indiana that I never knew there were so many Germans. Um, Like, there's a town called Hobstadt. Obviously, just by that name, you know it's German. But I didn't realize it until I started doing a lot of reactions to Germany. I'm like, huh. It's like a German community. Anyway. Let's play Spot the French Soldier. Did you see? There he is. Is that him? Right. He's wearing a bright blue uniform with red trousers. And do you know who else spotted him easily too? The Germans. This is awkward. I can't watch. Man, this is back in those days, huh? It was back in those days, you know. It's like they had some kind of pride or something to to wear clothing like that. And they would march toward each other and beat the drums and just line up the guns. Like, I think France was still stuck in those days. They didn't realize shit's getting a little bit more twisted so when the french were slowly marching in columns through the countryside the germans easily tore them to shreds with their giant guns all the nations involved in this war went in with an old school war mentality you know sometimes i get it right (laughs) i have to read these hold on going back going back going back trying to go back okay going way back all the nations war is an adventure (laughs) that's true that's still true, I think. I assume. I don't know if it's, it's probably not a, it's not a good one. Bayonet charges are cool. Still true. Cavalry 
is really effective. Not true. Dying for your country is awesome. I don't think dying is awesome in general. But if you like jump on a grenade to save your fellow comrades, that's cool. But just dying just to die, not really. He's involved in this war went in with an old school war mentality. And all of them had to update their uniforms and tactics a lot during the Great War. Oh my god. Because this war was going to be like nothing anyone had ever seen before. Russia's ready for war, and way earlier than expected. <laughs> oh shit. Can you get on top of that? <laughs> oh yeah, sure, we've got this. Stuff. Yeah. So Germany has to send some troops what could go to, wrong? to defend against the Russians. The chief of staff of the Austro-Hungarian army is this guy, and although he is handsome, he turns out not to be the best military strategy. What a badass mustache, gotta say. And a thin, close shave. Just Austria-Hungary constantly ignores Germany's advice, mm. and then comes running back to Germany whenever they get in trouble. <laughs> Austria-Hungary even gets its ass kicked by tiny Serbia, who repels all their invasion attempts at the start of the war. It's better news for Germany in the north, though, where they almost completely wipe out the Russian second army. Back on the western front, the Germans continue advancing and are in sight of Paris. At this point, anyone would be forgiven for thinking the Germans were going to get that quick victory after all. But then things start to go wrong. The French commander-in-chief knew something had to be done, and he ordered his armies to stop retreating. In the resulting battle, a gap opened up in the German lines. If a gap opens up, the enemy can use it to flank you from the side and behind, so the German armies have to retreat. The Allies launch a counterattack. That's some, like, what's the guy's book on war? Man. That, um, I'm just gonna stop talking. I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's an interesting military tactic right there. I'll tell you that much right now. It's so interesting to me. And especially before satellites and stuff, I can only imagine having to make these kind of decisions and, and say, you know, we think a gap opened up. You know, with satellites, this is all super easy today. It's like cheat codes. But before then, you'd, you'd, you'd be the genius being like, a gap opened up. Le, le gap opened up, sir. Um, perhaps we should flank from the side and behind, so the German armies have to retreat. The Allies launch a counterattack, so the Germans dig into defensive positions. The Allies do the same. Uh -oh. Then both sides move north, trying to outflank each other along the way. When mm. they reach the sea, they're in a stalemate with trench systems running the whole way from the coast to Switzerland. The beginning of trench warfare on the Western Front. Here's how trench warfare works. Two opposing <laughs> lines of trenches with no man's land in between. One side would pummel the other with hundreds of thousands of artillery shells, sometimes for days at a time. This had a huge psychological effect on the soldiers, leaving oh many... Oh my god. How is this guy... This is a really weird photo. This guy looks like he's smiling. These guys are crazy, man. They're built differently. Shell shock. Then, the attacking troops would leave their trenches and rush across no man's land. A muddy, wet mass of shell craters and barbed wire. It kind of reminds me of, like, the Berlin Wall, honestly. Kind of the between area. You know? The defending trench would unleash machine gun fire on the attackers, inflicting thousands of casualties. The attackers would send wave after wave until either they gave up or the opposing trench was... How do you feel being in one of those waves? <laughs> wave number six? Yep. But sir, that... So the first five waves, what happened to them? Go find out, sir. Good luck. Finally overrun. There would be months of fighting and the deaths of thousands in order to gain a few meters or kilometers of land. Living in the trenches was hard work too. Corpses, mud that could swallow you whole, pools of poisonous water, rats, disease, the smell. It's insane that millions of soldiers put up with these conditions and commanders ordered them to do so for years. Years. <laughs> that is one thing about, oh man, it's over. Damn. Okay, I was really into that. This is awesome. What a great series. I can't wait for part two. Subscribe if you want to, guys. I mean, maybe I'll just do it tomorrow. I don't know. Damn. Oversimplified. Go check him out. What an awesome, like, just super concise, fun, interesting. Get him to 8 million subs, guys. He deserves it. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm really excited to watch part two. Tomorrow, I think. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys.